and welcome to the NBS Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo, and joining me today is Silver Quill. Today shall be my day. Huzzah! Yay! You're welcome back, man. Welcome back. Yes, it's good to be back, Excelsior, and things like that. Yay! So, in today's episode review, we are going to review the latest My Little Pony movie, My Little Pony, A New Generation. And, and starting with that, the naming convention for this movie, to me personally, on a personal level, is awesome. Because I can't wait for Second Impact and Third Strike. Really, I'm more uh, just humming along. Da, 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 da. <laughs> oh, by the way, <laughs> by the way, Silver, you should really check out um, Lower Decks. That that is that is a fun show. Oh, I have seen Lower Decks, though apparently oh, I man. I've missed the season two finale. I have to go back and correct that. A grave yeah, but, injustice. But, but it's so much fun! My my goodness, like that is a show. That, that is special, man. That that show is special. Uh, but anyway, <clears throat> we're not talking about Star Trek or Street Fighter. We're talking about ponies. So uh, let me read the synopsis for this one. Uh, so anyway, after the time of the main six, Sunny, a young Earth pony, and her new unicorn friends, Easy, explore their world and strive to restore harmony to Equestria. This is the synopsis on IMDb. Uh, I'm sure Netflix has it's something different, and I can't find anything on the wiki page. Wiki wiki wah wah. Yep. But anywho, so so look, I I'm before we start with the review, whatever it is, we're gonna take this a little bit different. Usually we go scene by scenes and we talk about the whole stuff and whatnot. But now, uh, this this review or discussion. We're going to take it something differently. We're going to talk about more of a speculation or theorizing because what happened? If you did see the movie, that's awesome. And you you have a lot of questions. And I want to ask those questions and see if we have any theories that might come up great or not. An interesting Joyce, I know that uh, wondering what happened to Twilight and Company is probably one of the biggest deterrents to longtime fans watching this. And yeah, I mean, I ain't going to jump in right now because that will kind of force us, force our hands into getting into it. Because, yeah, I mean, we really want to ask those questions now, but uh, kind of laying the land first. Um, so before we officially start, Silver, what do you think of the movie as a whole? Oh, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I had so much fun watching these characters and uh, getting to know them just a little. I'll say right away that Izzy is my favorite, uncontested. <laughs> Izzy is your favorite. Oh man, I, I'm I, I'm a bit of a who now um, zip fan. I you a zip it. Yep. <laughs> Zip it. Yeah. Zip it. Good. So, uh, as for me, I really, I highly enjoyed this episode. And here's the thing: I didn't really catch it right away. Uh, I waited for a few days. I watched it on the twenty seventh of September. So, um, spoilers were everywhere, and I managed to avoid all of them. <laughs> so that's great on my part. And yeah, I mean, the movie was really awesome. Yes. No. Uh, no mean feat that. Mm-hmm. And said, Lord, did you have any fears going in, like thinking that, oh no, they're going to destroy this movie. Oh no, this movie is going to suck and so on. Well, there's the fear of any unknown experience. I mean, that's just a given. Uh, I can't say, I, sp I can't speak to any overt fear that was different than others, but just a general, oh, I really want this to go well. I really hope people enjoy this movie and that it, uh, it it entertains a new audience, revitalizes people's interest. And I think it's done so. Uh, the last I checked on IMDb, it was it was sitting at a 90% by critics, 88% by fans. I think you mean Rotten Tomato, but yes. Oh yeah, not uh, I recently, 
Yeah, I recently checked it and it was still at that. Uh, IMDb, by the way, has it at 7.0 out of 10. And, well, popularity aside, it's dropped a bit to 72 versus what it was at 43. But still, I mean, uh, it ain't going to be top rank for all the time because as it goes on, other shows comes in. So it's understandable if it wanes down in popularity. Indeed. But the fact that it's doing so well, the fact that it was number one movie on Netflix for a time. Yeah, like when the time that it came out and a week after that, it was still at the top 10, even top five. Actually, for almost every country. Well, it even became a numero uno here in America. Yeah, wow. That, that's just something. And that's... That's a statement of the fandom. Like, the fandom is still going strong. Even, um, what, after years of um, Pony and hiatus and so on? <clears throat> well, that, it, it, so, it is a, it's just fun to know that people are still enjoying uh, the Pony scene. Granted, not everyone's on board with the new movie. You know, that too is just part of being a fandom. We... True. Disagreements on everything. Oh, that is true. That is true. And also, I feel like for the naysayers, <laughs> get it? <laughs> uh, they they don't have enough attraction or enough to compel them to come back and watch because we only get one movie, and the movie itself opens a lot of questions that weren't answered. And we, and for future, we have a four forty-four minute special, and twenty-three twenty-two minute episode. So, those are going to fill some of the gaps that people might have. Some, but not all. We'll we'll see. True, and my last concern for this before we head in is that the voice. The voices, the cast members that they pick for the characters, they're they're really awesome. They're all good, but my biggest concern is that they're big name actors, and when it comes to the special or even series, they won't come back to reprise their role. As well, <laughs> as a Transformers fan in the eighties, I I know that experience. I mean, come on, they had Leonard Nimoy as Galvatron, and then they turned the reins back over to Megatron's voice actor. and Peter Cullen. Peter Cullen. No. Yeah, I think so. No, no, no. No, Peter Cullen is... Oh, no, that's Optimus the... Prime. Yeah, yeah, Optimus Prime. Uh, it was uh, He played Fred in Flintstones, right? Um, Scooby-Doo. Ah, I forgot his name. Never mind. I'll look for it. Continue. Sure, it's not Hugo Weaving? No, that's the movie. Megatron transforms behind the actors. Voice most times by Frank Welker. Yeah, Frank Welker. Okay. But either way, so he voiced Galvatron and he was a higher pitched crazy guy. Uh, but still can't beat Starscream. Attack! Attack who? Everyone! <laughs> oh, God. So, anywho, that's, uh, so I know that mode, it takes you a little time to get used to the new voice, but at the same time, you'll eventually, you do come to recognize that voice actor as the voice of your favorite character, or at least the character you recognize. True, but it's, it's one of those things that kind of takes you out of it because uh, like I mentioned in previous uh, news shows is that once you already hear the voice and it's stuck in your head like oh okay this character here is my favorite and I like the everything about the character including the voice suddenly when you hear somebody else do the voice you're questioning it a good example is Spike in Pony Life uh, Katie Westlock played her in the series then uh, somebody else played her in Pony Life. And that there was a big, huge change to the voice there. I think you mean him. Played him. 
Yes, sorry, my, my bad. Like, do not yeah, question totally Spike's active. masculinity. He's very insecure about that. Oh no! Or at least he was in I'm that so... in the season one episode, and then never again after. Yeah, I, I'm guessing he got used to it. But yeah, uh, th those are my concerns. Uh, I'm guessing you share them or don't. Ah, uh, I'm not too worried. Like I say, I've experienced the character <coughs> voice shift before, and honestly, if a character is wit written well and voice acted. Well, it doesn't have to match. It just has to be competent. You can enjoy it. Case in point, the right. Big Max voice actor took over for Discord in Pony Life. Mm, yes, that's true. And how can one really... One can never replace John Delancey. One can only do their best. Yeah, that is true. And yeah, he did well. He did well. I mean, it's not how I would have imagined it, but... Like you mentioned, who who can really do Discord? Who can change? Who can be the genie after Robin Williams? I mean, there's yeah, that's that's true. It's just the way of things, you know. Mm -hmm. The way of the Force. Yep. Let's not force the issue. There's always, there's always Homer Simpson. <laughs> oh. Uh, he played genie in the TV series. And he did an okay job. I recognize the character of Genie. I'm just not, but I'm just saying when Rob Williams came back to voice the Genie in Aladdin and the King of Thieves, I most definitely appreciated that. Yeah, totally understandable. But anywho, uh, if you guys at home have not watched this movie, go do so. Um, we're not going to go scene by scenes, but I hope you come back and enjoy our discussions. So. Uh, Silver, any point of interest that you want to touch on? Point of interest. I find it interesting how much the dynamic of the three tribes has shifted in terms of a pecking order. Izzy sings a wonderful song where she think where she's told that ponies, Earth ponies, are bottom rung. And let's be honest, anyone who watched G G four would tell you the same. <laughs> There's a reason there aren't that many uh, fandom Earth pony OCs. Is, I take offense to that. You can, but uh, you know you you can't raise a complaint to someone who's flying above you. <laughs> That's true. So unicorns used to be we we would make jokes about them being the best pony race. They'd be the ones who f who can not only work all kinds of magic but can fly, even if it means making their own wings. Mm -hmm. Now. The technological shift has actually put Earth ponies as best at home defense, uh, Pegasi the best at uh, long range communication. Or capitalism. <laughs> or capitalism. And unicorns are just in the pits. Uh, tribalism. Well, that's, tr mm -hmm. that's tr true of everybody, but also very heavy superstition. Oh, yeah. I, I never thought about it that way, but yeah, like, yeah. And the okay. low, lowest level of technology relying on the kinetic energy of animals. Uh, base, but basically, I think while Earth Pony and Pegasi had to start researching energy output as technology advanced, unicorns could just power everything with their magic. So once that went away, their entire species really really reverted true but here's the thing like here here's the big question what happened i mean like seriously what happened to equestria i'm guessing this is still equestria for it to be in that state and one of the biggest questions that's popped up if you're a fan of g4 and also there's this um uh, topic on EQD is where are the Windigos? Ah, yes, the age old question. I, honestly, I always feel like people have been asking the wrong question. Oh, everyone's like, Where are the Windigos? Why haven't the Windigos done this, this, and this? I've, I've been wondering, Why haven't the Windigos attacked anyone else? We learned that the Windigos feed on uh, negativity and hostility, <coughs> conflict. Mm -hmm. Well, the rest of the world, as shown in the MLP movie, ain't looking so hot. So 
Why is in some place like Clugtown suffering an unseasonable chill? It could be the Windigos are the manifestation of ponies. Okay, so one limited to ponies. In which case, that would be the trade-off to having such magical uh, resources at their disposal. But then... I mean, the, the, sorry, go ahead. Then some folks have noted that the Wendigos may have been utterly destroyed at the end of Season 9. No, they, Probably, yeah. They are all like, ah, after centuries, our time has come. Oh, Rainbow Laser, dead. <laughs> I mean, that that is a good theory there. That is a good theory there, and I can accept it. I'm dead. It makes me so sad. Uh, there's also the, the my pondering. Given that uh, magic is supposedly supposed to make the moon and the sky, uh, the moon and the sun move, and the seasons mm -hmm. change, I am wondering if there isn't some sort of core of magic still beating in Equestria that has taken over the uh, the roles ponies used to play. Uh, I'm guessing, this is my theory, I I'm guessing that Twilight kind of streamlines that process. And what I mean is that she created a magical artifact that does the whole process on its own. Uh, shifting it through 12 hour intervals. So from uh, six to six, it's, uh, you know what I mean? Like it, the sun and moon moves on their own now with power from the artifact. See, I would like to have an episode where Sunny and the others go to the remains of Ponyville and in the in the center of the former Castle of Friendship, there's a crystalline statue that used to be Twilight, <laughs> radiating magic. Ooh, that would be fun. That would be Twilight has held the line all this time, and this time is rather substantial. I mean, mm. if we believe that um, the tree used as a landmark and re uh, reference on the journey is meant to be the tree of uh tree of harmony of all no, the tree house of harmony <laughs> tree house of harmony is now again a tree but it's uh bark and leaves over crystal but if you look at it, the structure is is very similar mm -hmm. and you notice the everfree and forest is gone the mountain ranges have changed uh but that's that's the thing i was thinking right like looking at the map of uh maritime bay it's near the coastal region and Equestria or Ponyville and Cantalot, they're more up north. And here's the thing, like when you really think about it and ponder the locations of these areas, like I have a crazy herbal idea or theory. And the theory is that this tree unicorn, sorry, this tree pony, tribes are isolated from the proper equestria and that is why things happen to them now so you're saying is a uh, real and proper equestrians might appear one day and just be like what are you all up to oh you're being yeah. so silly this is what i get for dealing with pumpkins I mean, like, it could be a magical barrier that's blocking that part of uh, Equestria, and that's why their whatever it is got separated. I mean, it's kind of a question that, like, what happened? Like, either that they're separated and somehow near in the future they joined back to the proper Equestria. I think the idea that I'm having is similar to Shira. Uh, Princess of Power, ah. if you've seen that um, a show. Sadly, I've not, so I'll have to take your word for it. I'm, I'm, this is just a theory I'm thinking of. It could be something similar, but if it is, that would be very interesting and it raises more questions than answers. All questions, and then we learn the dark and terrible truth. Pinkie Pie left a light on in the bathroom. 
Oh no. That light That's not great. consumed power and power until one day she owed like 10 bajillion bits. There was a flaw in the equestrian economy. An unfillable sinkhole. The Dow declined. Investment bankers were like, oh my God! And so they had. Invest in cart games. Invest in cart games. <laughs> So they tore down all the trees in the Everfree Forest to make those cards, and the Timberwolves were not happy at being collectible hollow foils. <laughs> oh no, Yu-Gi-Oh is raising up again. <laughs> oh boys. But anywho. And then the then they lodged a formal complaint with Twilight, but no one could read their handwriting because you know, feral tree dogs. Not great on penmanship. <laughs> yes. I thought this guy should have helped, but anywho, uh, getting back on track. So, is there anything else you want to cover, or should we move into the Earth Ponies? Yes, Fluttershy demanded that all the animals stand at attention of one who is worthy, for he would be the one to bring harmony to the Timberwolves, and that is how we got Hitch. Oh, <laughs> Yes. His ultimate destiny is to play a card game for foals. On motorcycles. On motorcycles. <laughs> and only then will he become king of games. Okay. So yes, uh, Earth Ponies in the new generation. Like you mentioned before, uh, the technology has risen to a very astounding point. Uh, the idea or the story that we're given is that uh, this is Equestria thousands of moons ahead of uh, Season 9. And uh, we're introduced to certain accoutrements that we are used to. Uh, billboards, movie theaters, cell phones, um, what's this, uh, food trucks and so on. So things that we are used to while being foreign for Twilight and her gang. Like, yeah, you know, where, where, where's this cell phone stuff coming from? When did they get this level of movie? And is it really good to... Did you look at the endorsements for the Terminator yeah. movie? <laughs> yeah, I saw that. And you know what? Uh, my, my other theory is it's all Sunset's fault. Oh, what? Why, why do you get to blame Sunset for? Sunset introduced technology to certain ponies and uh, certain ponies kind of uh, duplicate what Earth has. Oh, that's great. Way to go, Sunset. You, you went with cultural corruption. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> she already corrupted uh, Starlight with ice cream. <laughs> well, they had ice cream before that. Not with that flavor. <laughs> It's the flavor that doomed the world. Wars were fought for the recipe. That's how everything went kopalooey. <laughs> uh, but honestly, um, yeah, like, like you mentioned before, the technology for Earth Ponies has risen to an astounding level. So, yeah, uh, biggest question is, what happened? It was Rainbow Dash. <laughs> okay, what happened? That's, like, well, what did she do? Oh, that's just it. It's just one day, boom, Rainbow Dash. Civilization collapse. Oh no. It totally happened. Dash. Just boom, Rainbow Dash. Everyone dead. Uh, <laughs> Rainbow Dash did the Sonic Green Boom too hard. Uh, boys. But uh, let, let's see if I can oh. find something to talk about. Or um, maybe, or maybe the debate over if Pinkie Pie and Applejack are genuinely related or not reached a cl violent conclusion where the fanboys and fangirls of Equestria tore, took each other out. Wow, that bad, eh? That bad. I mean, I don't know anyone who's actually wondered about that, but here we are. <laughs> uh, yes. But, um, like, like you mentioned before, uh, the technology, uh, technological investment for Earth Ponies has risen to kind of an impressive level. Uh, it's something that you don't really see at all. And uh, they have the basically they have what we have. I don't know. They seem to have better uh, role models. 
you sure? Have you seen Sprout? Well, he's not, he's not what I would call a role model. But it, come on, uh, how about Pip for at least at least being a better influencer than many? Uh, who now? Pip? Yep, Princess Pip, Pip Petals yeah. with her, yeah, with yeah, her yeah. Pip squeaks. Gee, oh my god! <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, no, no. oh god! Yeah, why not? <laughs> she, she's interesting. She's interesting. Actually, she's probably the least interesting character for me right now. I will oh. appreciate her more if we can get a bit more character development. Yeah, that is true. This speaks for all of them, actually. But Pip, especially, I feel she <laughs> she had the least amount of character development. Yeah, and also I feel like she didn't really have much to talk about or much to say besides she being angry at Zip. Yes, and she got over that in good order. Mm, true, true. Uh, but still, um, taking a look see at Sunny, uh, Sunny Star Scout, uh, she seems to be the twilight of this generation. Maybe, although she's not as huge a researcher as uh, Twilight in that she doesn't bury her head in a book. Oh, she has a book handy for when questions arise. But not, she doesn't like read about them a lot. She's more yeah, I mean, but, an idealist. Uh, that, that is true. But also when you think about it, it's all the info that she have. And that's concerning too, because when you look at it, uh, what's the time gap between the Earth Pony, Unicorn, and Pegasi war that split them up? Or even if there is a war? I mean, for all we know, it's just a disagreement and they um, um, just walk away and don't want to be friends. A terrible Parcheesi accident. That's the real culprit. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, but still, it's, that, that is something to ponder there too. Just one day, party, party easy tournament. Tribes divided. Yep. Don't question it. <laughs> yep. Oh man. So, like you mentioned, Sunny didn't isn't as studious as Twilight, but she has her charm. She she's kind of interesting. Well, I'm hoping her father's journal survived all the destruction of her home. Oh yeah, yeah, that, that is true. That that is very important too. Also, uh, I am very interested in what her father does. Like looking at the background, like it seems that he is a historian. Well, I'll tell you what he does. Mm -hmm. He dies off screen. Oh no! That's all he, he does. Got the Disney curse. He got Disney. It's like. It's like, ah, I'm watching you, Argyle. <laughs> you can't escape the Disney process. Ha <laughs> ha. I miss this. <clears throat> yes. I, I got those Marvel suckers. I'll get you ponies one day. Just you wait and see. Ha <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ha. Totally miss that. <laughs> yes. So, mm-hmm. Uh, don't, don't forget to mention her mother. She, she died off screen early on. She may have died in full birth. I mean, that's usually the the fond, the fond way of of tackling that little issue. Oh, yeah. Or what? If, oh, this would be great. Sunny goes. The destruction of the lighthouse reveals an underground lab. Sunny goes down and finds out that she is in fact a clone of the original Applejack and Twilight. <laughs> Oh no! She's the cross ship baby. <laughs> oh, no, not that. Her mother uh, was a gene tank and her father a petri dish. Oh no! Uh, not anything but that. And Argyle is a mad scientist who was actually a very loving father. It was a very positive impact in her life. So you know, kudos there. But still, it's quite bizarre. Oh <laughs> uh, boys, yep. Uh, I I think there's nothing more to say about Sunny. So what about? Uh, Hitch, he seems like okay. Hitch seems to be 
the change that the show kind of needed, but not really, because we already had um, Surfer Dude Guy. Who is his name? Uh, oh, uh, Sandbar? Yeah, Sandbar. Because at first I thought you wanted Zephyr Breeze, but he didn't really surf well. Yeah, no, no, no. We, we got Sandbar, we got Sandbar. And that's the thing. Um, how do I put this? Uh, having a male character in a lead is is a positive outlook for the show. Uh, we had... I, I was about to comment that having Hitch as one of the leads is very good and very interesting. Uh, it plays a lot with character dynamics and whatnot. But then I remember we had Gallus and also Sandbar. So yeah, um, already been done. Already been done, but let's... Gallus was from a very different culture. So there was a lot of culture shock involved. And Sandbar was so laid back, he was mostly exhibited individuality through Yona mm. and his relationship with her. What, oh, um, sorry, go ahead. what we got with Hitch is a much more independent, somewhat egocentric view. That Probably, I, I won't say that. I won't say it's too egotistical, like what Rarity or Rainbow Dash has. No, but he he knows being a sheriff is a big deal, and he expects people to be aware of that. And he also knows the responsibility, and he doesn't really flaunt it like how uh, Scorch was it? Oh, Sprout. Sprout, yes, yeah. He doesn't really flaunt it like how Sprout does. Oh, by the way, before we carry on, Spike. Spike was another male lead for the fourth generation, but he's the f- his background. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I mean, there, honestly, Spike is actually the most enduring icon of the My Little Pony franchise. You've had a Spike in G1, in G3, and G4. Mm-hmm. It is probably one of the most remarked upon names. We do not know... If there will be a spikeage here in this seat, this year's series. Oh yeah, you know what? I hope there is, and I hope he's the new Dragon Lord. <laughs> you wanted a violent coup against Ember? No, I mean. Oh, Ember fans, she's she. He doth profane your favorite. Attack! Nah. Destroy! They 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 ship they shipped. <laughs> Kill, crush, destroy, swag. <laughs> oh man, that's been so long. Yeah, but I'm um, bringing get, it back. Uh, but br- getting it back to Hitch, like you mentioned before, um, he he has an uh, what you call this, um, authoritarian uh, view. Oh, not really. That's what, what what did you use for him? So what I forgot. Well, there's authoritarianism. Not really. I mean, he's just doing his job. Okay, so thing. so what about utilitarianism? What does that mean? Basically, that you that value and ethics are based on one's ability to contribute and to perform acts. I wouldn't say I wouldn't say that describes him. It's mostly he's just doing his job as sheriff, and he sticks to his friends. And yeah, I mean, at first he seems like a stick in the mud, but as you go on, you can really appreciate him and root for him. Well, I think the animals have a great deal to do with that. Uh, Animals are a barometer for kindness. And if they're attracted to a certain character as the the birds and the crab are, and then later the Pomeranian, then you... And also the bunnies. And the bunnies. Once you're... They serve to let you know, hey, Hitch isn't all bad. He's not a tyrannical guy. He is just doing his job, and there's a kind streak to him. Mm-hmm. Without that, I think Hitch's reception would be very different throughout the ser- the movie. And also at the same time, too, he's he's just doing his job. Like there's a thing like each time when he goes chasing after Sunny, his his goal is to bring Sunny back and face the uh, face. The law, um, or what's the word I'm looking for? Consequences? Yeah, go for. Yes, consequences of her actions. That's about it. 
not until that he sees the bigger picture and realizes that oh this is beyond what's uh, going on and what Sunny's doing is for a greater cause the greater good yes the greater good the greater so, good shut it <laughs> so with that um let's move on to the unicorns of this new equestria uh, the unicorns have the mighty hath fallen yep they they live in okay honestly speaking let's take a few years back and look at where they live they live in a crystalline forest uh magic's flowing through it it looks beautiful it looks beautiful and i got no idea how their infrastructure works they pay with leaves leaves for everything Fall is fall is the economic windfall. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, when you take a look, see, it's very interesting. But once the magic's gone, it kind of sucks. Yeah, well, they do have a better job of animal power. I mean, they've at least gone green more than the others. I mean, the pollution level in... Uh, Zephyr Heights may be exceptional. And all the unicorns are like, no, we respect Mother Nature, man. <laughs> Just like our founder, oh. Tree Hugger, intended, dude. Wait, Tree, tree Hugger is an earth pony. <laughs> There's a. Actually, I think she's a unicorn. Really? Oh, man. Now, now I need to double check. Let's see here. Do an image. Tree Hugger. All one word? Nope, you're right. She is an earth pony. For some reason I got uh, in my head she was a unicorn. All right. So, yeah. Um, uh, what was I thinking again? Yes. Um, the unicorns, they, like you mentioned before, they kind of fell from grace and became more of like how the earth pony are in G4. Well, I don't know. Twilight would say anyone who lives in a tree is good by me. Oh, well, that's true. <laughs> but still, um, superstitious. Um, what else did you mention? They're really superstitious. They really. I don't know. Like the the superstitious was kind of the thing that got me. Certain words can't be said, or they have to say something. Oh yes, the Great Mayo Crisis of eighteen dickety two. Oh man, that was very bad. <laughs> Lord, I love. Hey kids, want to see Phil Lamar, voice of Static Shock and Green Lantern, and a million others in his new role? Bing bong, <laughs> bing bong boom. Oh, you're forgetting one more thing, Silver. He's Samurai Jack too. He's Samurai Jack. Well, well, now picture Samurai Jack making those sounds. <laughs> yep. Oh boy. Well, anywho, let's let's get too easy. What 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 do you think? You say your uh, he she's your favorite. She Even? is my fave. She is the most adorable, the most energetic, the most vulnerable of the characters, and so therefore I cannot help but adore her. That is true, and she is very lovable. Uh, her demeanor is very friendly and open. She is kind of oblivious to most dangers in Maritime Bay. So, yeah. And the only reason she went to Maritime Bay is because of a letter that Sunny sent when she was a filly. And that really broke, uh, that really uh, melted my heart. You know what I mean? Well, it's the, it's the rain boom scene for... G5. We are all connected. <coughs> all are one. We are Borg. <laughs> you will be friends shipped. Resistance <laughs> is futile. Yeah, but yeah, that, that was a cool scene. That, that was a very really cool scene. And also, like how Sunny is, she is the odd mare out in that, uh, in her community. Yes, she and Izzy share that, you know, party of Uno. Mm -hmm. But that's why I, I so enjoy their dynamic and why 
in some ways they are complements to one another. One focused and energetic, but uh, a little too closed minded or uh, too focused on one goal. The other bright, optimistic and aware, but easily distracted. Yeah, and the parallel to Pinky is obvious with this one. Well, a parallel to Pinky, but I hesitate when people say, oh, she's just Pinkie Pie 2.0. Oh, no. I think I, there's some I dis difference. I disagree. Yeah. Mm. I, I disagree with that. Like, she has the laughter and cheerfulness of Pinkie Pie, but she's not that oblivious, if you know what I mean. I'm not that innocent. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> um. But what else can we talk about the unicorns? Like ugh. Their fixation with armadillos? Uh, are they? I thought they were armadillos. I mean, are they fixated? Because I thought it was just a creature in that uh, part of the woods. Well, it's the only one helping out at the tea shop, of which I'm aware. And running on the treadmill for the uh, machines. Mm, so, for, so for right now, we've got crabs and birds in Maritime Bay, bunnies for Zephyr Heights, and uh, armadillos for uh, Whitetail Wood. No, no, Bridal mm. Wood. Bridal, yes. But that, uh, no comment. Uh, like, everything seems to be in order. Um, should we head to the Pegasus? Sure, why not? All righty then. Let's go up high and meet with the Pegasus of Zephyr Heights, was it? Yes. So With, with all their product placement and billboard, second only to Chicago in amount of advertising. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, as as we go into Zephyr Heights, the scene is wow. The scene is just wow. Um, I I believe there is a uh, what's this? Statistics? What they call this on the wiki page? I'm sorry, logistics. Oh, no, no uh, el elucidation. Elucidation. Why would why would they would why would they use that word? Um, I'm going to go for trivia. Yes. So, in the what you call this? Uh, wait, what? 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 Where is my, where is my stuff? Okay, new generations. Yes. As they reach Zephyr Heights, we see Z Heights, uh, a logo that looks similar to T-Mobile, and then we see a pony logo that's similar to Sony. And if you watch a lot of anime, um. Every Sony logo changes into Pony. And then there's CBS, but it has some lightning bolts in it. Yeah, ZBS, they call it. Uh, McWings. <laughs> Honestly, that one's a little troubling. Where are you getting the wing meat? Uh, mm... I didn't see any chicken farms. <laughs> God, no. Uh, Philly Elliot. <laughs> Uh, is there a high postal service? Yep. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, Amplify. <laughs> That's Spotify. Uh, but still, uh, like, the product placement in Zephyr Heights shows that Zephyr Heights is a metropolitan country, a metropolitan uh, state, something like that. Yeah. And by the looks of it, uh, they, uh, like what? Um, instead of their uh, lineage of being um, warriors, they have kind of moved on to the more, how would I put this? They have moved on into the more uh, capitalistic mindset. But look, they have the shield. And they deployed the shield. <laughs> okay. You're talking about Earth aren't you? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, you're talking about... Oh, God. The unicorn shield thingy. 
Yeah, it's balling. <laughs> uh, game set and match, I guess. Mm. 30 to love. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, but, oh, man. But if you take a look, see, their communication is way beyond what we have in um, Maritime Bay. Is yeah. it now? Well, when you live in, on mountaintops and you can't fly, I could see how communication development would be a priority. Well, if you think about it, like, does Maritime Bay have the same uh, leisures as what Zephyr Heights have? Uh, no. In terms of communication, because we all know that um, the Earthmonies have cell phones, so does the Pegasi. Unicorns are another story altogether, but still. Did we see an Earth Pony using a smartphone? I believe they took a selfie. Yes, no? Well, that was Pip who took a selfie. Really? Now, now that I, I thought in one of the concept art, they showed a pony doing so? With a stick and whatnot? They may have, but I don't think it translated into the movie. As far as I'm aware, only Pegasi got to flash their cell phones, but by howdy, did they have cell phones? Oh, yeah, true. Everybody's that. got a cell phone. Everybody wants a cell phone. Even <laughs> okay, Izzy so... gets gets swept up in the pip pip hurrah. <laughs> uh, so, if that's the case, um, Earth Ponies doesn't have the luxury of uh, having a cellular telephone. All right. Okay. Surprise, surprise. Mm hmm. But just imagine once friendship spreads, um, the iPony is going to go across every continent and everybody wants to have that uh, latest version of the iPony. Oh, it'd be something if that was what, uh, that was what tipped the scales. The tech wars. Yep, don't forget about Pony Amazon. But there was no William Shatner for this tech wars. He was too busy being in space. <laughs> space, yes. I'm in space. Oh, topical. Space! But, yes, uh, getting back on track with how the Pegasi kind of develop a lot of their technologies for entertainment. It's kind of interesting to see what can happen once they get back into friendship with other races. But funny enough, uh, when their magic's gone, they lose the ability to fly. And at points, uh, only royalty can fly, which is a lie. It's the divine right of kings all over again. Which is a lie. Which is a lie, but it's a lie that kept them at a basis for power for a while. These days, Monarchies are on the decline because people understand uh, the right to rule is more derived from the masses than from any deity. Um, talking about our modern days? In real life? Yes. Mm, true, but certain countries uh, do follow a um, monarchy instead of a um, more... Um, modern day, what you call this, uh, ruling. There are some countries that work it well. Or they and work some, it. Yep, and some countries <clears throat> that don't. Oh, work uh, it, your majesty. Oh, no. <clears throat> but anywho, but anywho. Anything more to add with uh, Pegasi Silver? Well, I will say the, the king or the monarchy... Uh, approach is on its way out because as far as I know, none of the major powers in the world still feature a king. It'd be one... There it, is some... Sorry. I mean, it'd be one thing if, like, one day we learned, holy snap, there really is a Wakanda, but as far as I know, that ain't happened. Um, I'll, I'll just enlighten you with a country called Brunei. It's in between Malaysia uh -huh. On the east side of Malaysia, it's a very small country where its uh, its sultan 
uh, Sultan is the leader of the country. And here's the thing. He is a benevolent, <laughs> beloved and benevolent leader who take care of his people. And one of the few things that he does is, or one of the few things that the country uh, makes makes the country kind of rich or kind of floats above, is that it produces a lot of oil. And since he is the only one that is controlling things, he kind of sells it for cheap, or the government, or or he, the government that he controls sells it for cheap to his people. And some of the what you call this, um, uh, leisure, leisure, I would say leisure, but um, uh, com- commodities like uh, gas, heat, and electric are set to a very cheap or a very affordable level. <clears throat> well, then, I hope that continues. I don't want to weigh in on a country that I've never been to. I don't know if I can say, is it included in the, in the quote, first world uh, countries? It's, um, it's, it's hard to, how to put this. If people are people from Brunei who are listening to this, please chime in because uh, when I was there, I was still in diapers. So most of the stories I'm hearing are secondhand from my mother who lived there for a while. So yeah, um, I'm hearing a lot of good things, but there are certain rules and regulation that makes uh, that makes some. Bruneians a bit wary because uh, it is a religious uh, country and the religion that they hold is Islam. And uh, that's, that's, I ain't going to touch on that one. Just use your imaginations on that. Yes, we're, we're in a bad spot now. A bad, a bad discussion. A bad discussion. Yes. Yes, yes. Rule of threes. <laughs> So, like I mentioned before, if you are from Brunei, do do chime in below in the chat so you can tell us how you guys live and how things are because I may be out of date. <laughs> but from what I heard, it is a very fine country. Well, so, uh, in Silver, any right? case, the divine right of wings has been uh, forfeited. Now, everybody can fly. Which so, is kind of what they wanted to do at the first place because... The idea for them was that, oh no, everybody lost their will um, ability to fly, except for the royalty. So only royalties can fly because they're special. But uh, I have to wonder, Zip clearly hated living that lie. I wonder if trying to get magic back was as much to get her family to shuffle off the leadership stage. And now there's the conflict with her mom, who will probably do her best to spin this. Oh, hey, we saved magic for Equestria. Doesn't that count for anything? Probably. But at the same time, too, if the queen wants to rule, I say let it be like how Cantalot used to be. I mean, as long as they're doing a good job and so on, as and as they integrate with Equestria proper, so we'll get to see more of that diversity going on? Well, I don't know. I mean, I don't know how good uh, their policy was. Or is someone going to say, hey, you, your time was when we were divided. Now that we're getting along, we need new leadership. Oh, I could see a, a race for leadership of Zephyr Heights. Probably, but We'll have to wait and see. One thing I need to comment is that uh, the feathers on the ponies, they look different. Except for Zip. Zip Storm's feathers are reminiscent to what we already have in G4. But Pip, Pip's feathers are very fluffy. I believe they're called downy? Feather down? Down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, do you know anything about that? Being down uh, only when I need a little bit of Prozac or some such. <laughs> no, I mean, did they explain why her feathers were like that? 
No, but I appreciate that they are different. It adds a, a new layer to how a Pegasus personality is presented. Say that three times fast. <laughs> yeah. And one of the things that they removed from the uh, movie was that a Pegasi hooves have feathers on them. Yeah, they removed them apparently because they were too hard to animate. Or they, they didn't really work well. They didn't want to behave properly. <laughs> Well, I'm familiar with difficult follicles, so I can empathize. <laughs> yep, yep. And with that out of the way, I, I guess we kind of mentioned all three races and most of the characters. So, any other characters you want to talk about, Silver? Well, we haven't really talked about Phyllis and Sprout. Phyllis. Phyllis, Phyllis, Phyllis? Sprout's mom. Wonder... Oh, blonde, yes. Blonde-haired ladies. She kind of looks like the glass half empty pony from uh, uh, Fame and Misfortune. Oh. So I, I wonder if there was maybe just a little inspiration taken from that. Probably. Related, maybe. I do not know. But either way, she is the suffocating mother, the overly attentive, uh, overly pampering adult who raises a pretty poor son. Yep, and oh man, that 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 there is already <laughs> uh, red flags. Red flags. <coughs> red flag, crimson. Yeah, but still, um, what was the name again? I forgot. I don't have, I don't have a what you call this wiki in front of me that shows all the characters from G five. Let's see here. But anywho, um, uh, while you while you try and find a list, I am going to try and uh, what should we call this? Mm, talk about Phyllis. What's her name? Yep, still checking. One sec. So anyway, the the mother character was kind of the. Atypical, overbearing mother, uh, giving false confidence to her son, and yeah, she, she's basically the mayor of Maritime Bay. She's the genuine power. Phyllis Cloverleaf. Yes, Phyllis Cloverleaf. And, oh man, was she... I won't say overbearingly annoying, but she's, 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 yeah. She has high ambitions for her son, but isn't willing to let him go forth and experience the, experience that on her, his own. In essence, she is the overly clingy mother who, sm who stifles creativity and growth. Yep, sounds about right. And... Oh man, like, what can I say, man? Like, she plays the part right. What can we say except you're horrible <laughs> for the son who you raised to be a tool? Uh, and let's talk about Sprout then. I don't want to say some things about Sprout because <laughs> we're a family show. Oh no, that Betty. Oh, well, he's meant to be awful, and you do have a way to feel pity for him, that he's an un incomplete man. He has never been challenged or grown in the way he should. But at the same time, I totally understand if you're just like, ah, that guy is such an annoying little pill. <laughs> uh, yeah, that is, that is also true. But he's... But that's one of those things, like, his character is based on what her, his mother kind of pushed in, giving him false confidence, giving him uh, false, uh, what you call this? Yeah, false confidence and false um, uh, teachings and whatnot. Mm. Even uh, her insistence of, Unicorn bad, Pegasi bad, Earth Pony superior kind of 
thinking is also bad too. Well, I mean, it, the thing is, and I hold on to this, neither Phyllis nor Sprout invented this twisted philosophy. They are as much victims of this false mentality as the those that, to whom they sell their products. Whatever happened to divide the three tribes happened a very long time ago. So in a weird way, these two are embodiments of this philosophy rather than its perpetrators. Which is true because, like like I mentioned before, we got no idea how far back this war or this separation happened. Outside of living memory is all I know. Yeah, and <laughs> like I mentioned before, what the hey happened? Well, let's see here. I've already covered Pinkie Pie leaving the bathroom light on. <laughs> uh, Rarity with her her plans. Fluttershy. Uh, find the next successor. That's Hitch. Play mm -hmm. a card game. <laughs> now, Rarity, Rarity tried to buy the electric plant that was powering the light for Pinkie Pie's home. And that's oh, when no. the real trouble started. Oh, no. Turned out she undermined the entire equestrian economy by simply hunting for gems. Oh, no. So, tricky Rarity. Tricky. Yes. But other than that, like uh, Sprout, um, when power gets over, uh, gets to his head, he really, really abuses it. Yep. He, well, he finally is free of limitations and he's taking advantage. And that's bad. That That's really bad for the citizens of Maritime Bay. But at the same time, they kind of eat it up. <laughs> Well, he, there's this philosophy that a mob or just any gathering of people has its own mentality and emotional reaction that overrides even the individuals within that group. It says something when he's able to gather so much of a mob in such a short amount of time. One Which song, is... in fact. <laughs> and talking about songs... The, the songs for this generation is okay. I, I won't say they're, they're um, memorable like how Winter Wrap-Up is, but mm. uh, we have some good ones in here. Oh, yes. Uh, my personal favorite, Be My Day. Be My Day. Uh, going to be my day, yes. Uh, honestly, for me, uh, that is a good one too. And uh, what was it again? What was that? Yeah, Danger Danger. Uh, angry Mob song. Mop, 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 mop. <laughs> angry, angry. Yep. That, uh, man, like, I'm trying to still decide what kind of tune that is. Is it punk rock? It's sort of in Scar. Like, what was it again? Like, that was kind of cool, man. Well, I wish I had an answer for you, but I don't. Yeah. So you you say gonna be my days, uh, awesome for you. Mm -hmm. um, followed, by fit, yeah. followed by fit Sorry. right in. Oh, that that's a good one too. That's a good one too. <laughs> and I guess that well, if you've read the song, we're near uh, at the end of our questions. Uh, so what else? The, okay, I'm gonna leave the floor open for you, Silver. Anything you want to talk about? Anything I want to talk about. Hmm. <laughs> well, we haven't talked about the other cultures. Uh, the ah, griffins, yes. the hippogriffs, the dragons. I mean, may, I know you want to have Spike take over Ember's role as dragon lord. Yeah, after hooking up with her. <laughs> shipping. Ooh, after Ooh, shipping. We haven't up. talked about shipping. Sorry. Oh, yes. It's Trailblazer. The infinitely okay. shippable. He could be shipped with just about any mare in this entire group. Which or, is, okay, uh, sorry, I have to point something out. We have a group of five here, and that means uh, by Power Rangers logic, we need a six ranger. Well, I mean, I don't know if Sprout's going to enjoy some sort of uh, reformation, become the sixth member. 
I doubt it because looking at how uh, My Little Pony likes to balance things out, we're going to get another unicorn. I'm not sure. I do not know. I would welcome a unicorn. I would welcome a unicorn who is sort of Izzy's opposite. Probably. And here's the thing. Like, if we really want to theorize and... Um, yeah, like, like I said, I'll theorize or even speculate. If my theory was true about Maritime Bay, Zephyr Heights, and also... Uh, what was Z Easy Moon's location? <laughs> God, I have a great lives. Yes, Bridal Woods. Uh, in, yeah, like if all those three locations were separated from Equestria proper, uh, it will be very interesting that a once they get back into the fold, a unicorn pony from Cantalot joins them because he or she wants to research on the group to find out what happened and to stick to them to, you know, keep mm -hmm. an eye on them. It would be very interesting if that were to happen. I getcha. He or she, probably a he, would balance things out. Well, but sometimes uh, you don't want balance. Sometimes you just want a little chaos. Oh, man, I ain't going to even touch that one. Nope. But still, we if it's a uh, filly, that will be great. If it's a foal, that will be also great too. Oh, maybe a little brother sister to the group. Mm hmm. Oh. Of course, the, of course, then that get, character gets kidnapped all the time. Oh god, no. Hey, that's sometimes oh. how these work. Oh no! But anywho, but anywho, um, like you, like you were saying before, um, uh, you know what? I'm gonna go shipping. Like, who do you ship? This G5 with. Already? One, I, I can see why people ship Sunny and Izzy. They're certainly close. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Sometimes very close, if you know what I mean. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, well, Hitch and Sunny, because of childhood friendships, that's always mm -hmm. nice. Or Hitch and Pip. Because I know the first time he saw her, she was in a performance. Surrounded by feathers of the light playing on her. If that isn't a romantic sight, I don't yeah. know what is. Yeah, and Hitch being awed by the majesty of what he sees. And also that that uh, little um, conversation trait that they have, that was kind of cool. Well, there you go. So uh, you mentioned that, okay, uh, you've seen a lot of Sunny Easy and you ship Hitch and Pip. Uh huh. Same here too. Same here too. I I think I told you my reasoning. Uh, it was because of that little uh little interaction that they have, suddenly blooming into something more. <clears throat> oh, very possible. Mm hmm. It's possible. And Zip here is the lone mare out. Well, she's royalty, so a partner will probably present themselves. Whether or probably. not whether or not she actually wants that partner is a different matter. Ah, uh, yes, that's true, that's true. We will have to wait and see in future episodes even if they tackle that or not. Indeed. Now, back to creatures of other places. All the creatures, all the places. Yeah, I mean <laughs> I, I okay pers on a personal level, I would want to know what happened to the griffins, or the hippogriffs, or the crystal po the crystal ponies. They're a thing, right? Barely. I'd be surprised <laughs> if they just plum forgot themselves. <laughs> yeah, um, and then they are shifted to the shadow realm. That is why Hitch is. Uh, training to play card games on motorcycles. On motorcycles! To gain access to the Shadow Realm to save the Crystal Ponies. That would be something. But there, as you say, this is on Equestria's coast. To mm -hmm. the southeast, if I'm not mistaken. I think so, probably. So, the Crystal Empire is far, far north. 
Yep, they, may be, they may have broken away into their own city-state. Yeah, and they have close relation ties with the Yaks. And bugbears. Bugbears are in the north? Actually, they're more in the east, but uh, they, they've got the market cornered on uh, access. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, there's a lot of questions there. Like, even if we go beyond uh, the series, we got the movies, the Abyssinians are one thing. Mm-hmm. Even the Diamond Dogs. Ah, the Diamond Dogs. Season 10's depiction of the Diamond Dogs has drawn quite a, quite a stir. So I wonder... Season. Oh. The comics. Yes, I need to finish that. Well, the... The Diamond Dog arc is a study in how much can you alter a design before people start to resent it. Oh, that bad, eh? Well, I like their looks, but I I do agree they look very different from the Diamond Dogs to which we were introduced. Okay, I'm going to read it and judge it for myself. There you go. Also, changelings. Changelings. Well, how do you know there weren't changelings in this movie? Oh, uh, because of the magic. Their magic were gone? Oh, pony magic is gone. Changeling magic is still up for grabs. Oh, yeah. But because of this harmony... No, not really. Bec- yeah, oh, man. You got a point. I do my best. Man. Dragons. Dragons are the, the other thing. Well, dragons are too cool to wait. Like, we're not going to... Stand around while you figure out friendship. We're going to have our own friends with blackjack and ice cream. Yeah. Actually, don't forget the first two. Yeah. Oh, man. But still. Yeah, I I, I got nothing more, man. Like, this is one of those things where all, all will be answered if they will be answered in the special and also series. Yep, I think that's the the big thing that people are holding out for. This movie was not a where are they now kind of story. It is a what's new. We may learn where they are now or what happened to them as the story progresses. And here's the thing about the history of the world as we go into G5. They probably won't be answered at all because, um, how do I put this? An analogy for the real world that we have now is that just try try to imagine that we were there when uh, Jesus was around and we go back to where we are now in time and see all the things that they talk about and knowing that, hey, wait, that didn't happen. Like, hey, that's not how the story went. Yeah, like having that kind of information... That that could be damning. Hey, Jesus booted me in the head. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I mean, knowing what we know of Equestria, that's why we are kind of uh, how do I put this critical. But just imagine if you're a new fan to the show who got no idea what happened in G4 and don't really care for G4 uh, only watch G5 and wants to continue on with G5 the past doesn't really matter well I guess it depends on if you can tie it together I'll give you an odd analogy Mm. or comparison Uh, there was a Transformers episode called War Dawn where the newly constructed aerial bots got sent back in time to Cybertron's history. Mm -hmm. And we learned the origin of Optimus Prime. Now, to the aerial bots, that is really superfluous information. They were born into a war. Mm -hmm. And yet, they're more a part of the story now that we know that they've experienced it. I think it could be the same if our... uh, if our newest ponies look into the past and find what they find out what all went on. I would love that. I I would really love that. I mean, the thing about the the reason why I said why I said is because that it will be much simpler if 
they do their own thing instead of relying on the past. But having that rich history of Equestria, that's something to lean in on. I mean, if they really didn't want to use uh, what they already built up, they could have done something new or original. Uh, a good example is the original My Little Pony to My Little Pony Tales. Mm -hmm. Totally new, totally nothing to do with the first generation. Well, tell you true, uh, a new generation is the only sequel in this series. That is true. That Every is true. series has been independent. And with a new generation, it's kind of a loose sequel. It can stand on its own, hence G5. Or, wait, I'm, I'm going to pull it back. Do you think they just rename it G5 because of the looks or because of everything? Well, I think it's because they realize they needed a fresh start. And it is a different look, to be sure. I appreciate the little blurb at the beginning as a sort of farewell to our main six. Yeah. But uh, I do think it's new enough that it warrants a G5. Mm. While still holding a bit of history for uh, the old fans. Well, that's a bit of uncharted territory. How will people react? Oh, that's true. That's true. Uh, kind of reminds me of... Well, Star Trek. They're going to the Star Trek. We, we, we had the original Kirk story, the Enterprise, and then as it goes on to the next generation, we have Picard. And technically, it had nothing to do with the original series, but it kind of played a part, was it? Oh, nothing technical about it. It was part. I mean... Bones McCoy is on the ship in the second episode. They rescue Captain Scott. Uh, Captain Kirk takes part in the movie. Mm. Ambassador Spock is on the Enterprise, and then Romulus. Ah. So, essentially, what G5 is doing is similar to that? In a sense, yes. Mm. Telling its own story, but still making reference to the older. So that is something to look forward to. All righty then. Oh, man. You know what could really make this sh show awesome? is a time-traveling pony. Oh, that'd be great. They appear at the beginning and the end, and they got it backwards. Wow, what a great show that was. <laughs> what? You haven't seen it yet? Oh, dang. Oh, oh hang on. I'll see Spoilers. you later. I'll, I'll see you in the credits. <laughs> Yep. Oh man, it, it could be one of those things, man. Like, um, uh, the time traveling pony could be the sixth member of the group, uh, trying to explain how things are in, uh, olden pony times, <laughs> and discovering what a cell phone is. Oh, that's a whole other kettle of fish. Mm -hmm. How do you type with hooves? <laughs> Very carefully. <laughs> oh, reminds me of how do you type with boxing gloves on? <laughs> Well, if you don't, then uh, it turns out pretty and darn negative. <laughs> uh, uh, all righty then. I think we have reached our limits. So, yes. Um, care to wrap it up, Silver? Yes. Well, just that I'm fascinated to see how Equestria has changed. Curious why it changed, but... That was not the that was not what the movie asked me to focus on. It said, "Here are new characters. Will you please give them a shot?" Some folks I think could could do that. Others weren't willing or unable. So it's going to vary person to person. But I, for one, thoroughly enjoyed it. Would love to learn more about this new Equestria, and then uh, hopefully learn a little bit more about what happened to our old faves. Because as much as I might like Izzy. Fluttershy is still my fave pony. Oh, that is true. And I, for one, welcome our new overlord. <laughs> She's going to fit right in. <laughs> yep. Uh, but still, um, I, I agree with you, man. Like, the 
giving okay uh watching the movie i came in with a blank slate knowing that okay g5 is its own thing and i shall review and judge it on its own merits and after watching what yeah after watching g5 i highly enjoy the movie and i cannot wait for more i i want to know more um knowing that there's four specials on the way i think there's four specials right i'm unsure i thought it was just one but if there are four i ain't complaining mm. uh i i saw a listing for four so either or and this new series um with the voices that one i'm going to take it with a grain of salt when the time comes they're probably gonna hire people that sound alike, if not sound the closest. Makes sense. But, yep. Yeah. But still, I will. I can't wait because it's more pony content, and as per usual, more pony content means more for us to talk about. Ain't that right? There we go. So, anywho, any last words to finish off, Silver? Welcome to the new generation. Ah, da -da -da, da -da -da. I'm playing this song again. Copyright strike. Oh no. <laughs> yes. But yeah, it is a fun show. It is a fun show. Anyways, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at imagergmail.com. Uh, you can also reach us on the Twitter. The show's Twitter account is at the media show. And my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Silver, where can the good people find you? Oh, you can find me lots of places. You can find me on DeviantArt and Twitter and YouTube under MLP Silver Quill. Just do a search and ye shall find me. Also on YouTube, a search of After the Fact should get my channel to pop up. Uh, you can also find me on Ko-fi and Patreon, MLP Silver Quill. And you can support my comics, uh, panel presentations, and video reviews. Awesome, awesome. Don't forget that if he's going to a convention, he will announce it and you can catch him where now, Silva? Well, I'll be coming up. Uh, by the time this airs, I'll be at uh, Ponyville Cider Fest in Milwaukee. When will that happen, Silver? Just to October 22nd through the 24th uh -huh. in Mil Milwaukee. So that means this episode has to come out ASAP. But you know what? I'll do something special. I'll 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 do some editing shenanigans on my end. <laughs> oh, he's got some shenanigans going. Yes, I'll I'll do some editing shenanigans. <laughs> there you go. Excellent. Uh, Shenanigan uh, eyes. Be sure to catch him, say hello and whatnot. Oh, by the way, Silver, do you have any interesting pony swag mask? Uh, that you bought or wear or could be selling? Well, I don't have a mask. I have hacky sacks. Ooh, something interesting. Yes. So angry Quill or hacky sacks? Angry Quill, okay, that, that's going to be cool. Uh, so uh, why don't you take a picture, share it with me, and yeah, uh, go buy it from Silver if you visit his booth. So, yes, please, we'd love to have you. So, where was I on the script? Yes, also, please subscribe to us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And also, stay to radio and also like our Facebook page. Links can be found in the show notes below. If you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash show. With every support, you get a week's early access to review and discussion podcasts, exclusive and deleted content, and a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank yous, I would like to thank Lucky Knight, Jeffrey, Master of Lack, and also Tristan. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. So... Anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am the Silver Quill. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the MBS show. See ya. Adios. I miss that sound, man. That that sound has... Oh, man. I'm so nostalgic with that sound. Well, you can always put it at the end of your videos. I mean, so... It won't it's... be the same... Oh, it's not the same, oh, the sadness. Also, um, here is another story. Well, su surprise spec story for s people who keep on listening to this. Um, my hard drive with all the musics and whatnot was corrupted.
Oh. Died. Oh. Like totally died. Oh. Like, just just imagine e- 11 years of pony music that I collected over the years gone. Oh, bitter pill. <laughs> yep. And here's here's the even um said and most hurtful part is that I send it for recovery. Uh it took a while and I'm still waiting. But the quotation that they gave me was about almost two thousand ringgit. Uh if you convert that to dollars, it's uh two thousand divided by four. I see. How much would that be? Thousand divided by so yeah, I have to pay five hundred dollars to recover. Uh. I'm not hundred percent sure if it's cheaper on your end or whatever it is, but still, I have to pay five hundred dollars. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> yep, <sighs> but still, if I can recover all the music that I have, especially the pony music, it'll be worth it. <laughs> Godspeed.